My name is Ellen Charge, and I'm one of the founding members of the Community Paramedic Program City Center team. Our team has been in operation for just over two years, and I've been there since the beginning. We have a small team of five people, with two people working in what we lovingly call the Ativan at any one time. <laughs> the Community Paramedic Program City Center team is basically a mobile, non urgent healthcare team that brings basic medical care to homeless and vulnerable individuals around the city of Calgary. Our team's work was made possible with grant funding from AHS Addictions and Mental Health as part of the response to the report and recommendations made by the Calgary Recovery, Recovery Services Task Force. This task force was made up of people from various disciplines working with the homeless and to inform their recommendations they surveyed over 300 Calgarians living with homelessness. And to inform, um, at the top of their list of what we need to do to help people living with homeless, homelessness was better access to health care. To tell you more about our team and what we've done to address this need, I would like to introduce you to POPS. POPS has been living on the streets in Calgary for the last 15 years. And POPS has never taken advantage of any of the local shelters or food banks or any of the other myriad services available to vulnerable Calgarians. And in his time on the street, he has built up a reputation and a following in the area he inhabits. He is proud to say that he has helped many lost souls learn how to survive on the street, and he feels very protective of many of them. And that is how he got the name of Pops about 10 years ago. Pops is pretty easy to recognize as he's a familiar face to many who frequent the popular Calgary shopping district. He's really friendly, he loves dogs, and uses puppets that he's created out of stuffed animals to put on a bit of, of a ventriloquism act to bring in a little money. Because of his protective nature, he would often get in fights and have many open wounds with no way to keep them um, clean, bandaged, or take medications like antibiotics. He also ended up fracturing his ankle once and never had it set properly, so it bothers him to this day. One of the elders from the Street Outreach and Stabilization team had heard about our team from a presentation and he called us worried about Pops, his many infections, his rotting teeth and his ankle. The SOS worker wanted to meet with us first to explain to us what a delicate situation this was. Pops was really not open to help from any medical people as he had had some horrible experiences in the past and wanted nothing to do with healthcare teams. He was also fearful of people trying to trick him into going to hospital. He was afraid he could not stay very long without going into alcohol withdrawal. He had often told the SOS worker that the only way he was going to hospital was if he was totally unconscious and didn't have a choice. Because of his circumstances, he was suspicious, untrusting, and disconnected. These things had made him, like many of our clients, less likely to access resources even when needed. This often ends up causing unchecked illness progression to where our clients need a longer and more complicated hospital stay. The hospital stay is also complicated by patients going into withdrawal or getting into conflicts with hospital staff due to mental health problems. And when hospitals release people, it usually involves a transition into the care of families and family physicians, support that our clients rarely have. So we were introduced to Pops through the SOS worker. He was suspicious, but because we were with the worker, he was willing to listen to what we had to say. Now, I don't think that we did anything terribly different from any other compassionate healthcare worker, but we were on his turf and we let him call all the shots. We told him what we could do and what we could see that needed to be done, but we listened to him and heard what he was willing to go through and what made him uncomfortable. We let him make all the decisions on his own care, and then we problem solve to find ways to make it work. Because Pops lived on the street and had no way to contact us, we would give him a time frame and he would agree to meet us at a specific location. Over the months, we were able to address some of his medical concerns totally on his terms. First, we were able to get all of his infections under control. We did frequent wound care and made sure that he was taking his antibiotics appropriately. Occasionally, we had to suture up some of his worst cuts and then nurse them through the healing process. We were able to help him with his ankle in a way that was satisfactory to him. As paramedics, our biggest strength is problem solving. So if we couldn't solve his medical problem the traditional way, we would think up 
alternatives and collaborate with him and our supporting physicians to come up with something that worked. So how does our service accomplish these lofty goals of creating a low barrier healthcare service for vulnerable persons like POPs? One, um, one way that helps improve their basic health care and find ways to connect them to other services for complex care where they are treated with dignity and respect while also taking into account the complicating factors of addiction and mental illness. First, we're mobile and we'll go where we're needed. Being paramedics for many years, we're used to working in challenging and uncontrolled conditions. This also provides the option of transporting our clients to appointments when they need someone they trust to advocate for them. Further, this mobility helps to foster relationships with other services that can meet and talk with us rather than just get a phone call or an email so they end up feeling that they know us and can rely on us when they have challenging clients to find or to help with various problems. Second, we're responsive. We can usually see people the same day and we work 9 to 9, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. So we are often around when other healthcare services are not. And although we are primarily a professional to professional service, we have let people like Pops have our number because he doesn't have a professional around to call for us when he needs us. We don't necessarily give this out all the time, but we've never regretted doing this. Pops is very respectful of our time and talents and only calls on us when he needs us as he realizes just how many people we are there to help. One of our most useful functions is the ability with the collaboration of a small group of dedicated physicians to diagnose and give definitive care in place. So many of our clients refuse to go to hospital and will not follow the rules to get in to see a family physician or an appointment is made but because of their circumstances and or their comor comorbidities of addiction and mental health problems they will often miss them. The opposite side of this coin is that they will often inappropriately or ineffectively over rely on emergency or urgent care services. We have the ability to go to them when and where they are and we arrive with an understanding of their circumstances, some compassion and a grounding in trauma-informed care. Collaboration is another thing that we do and really that really helps our clients. We, cre we create relationships with like-minded services so that we know that our, clients will, that our clients will continue to get respect and dignity and when we gain their trust, they know they can trust the people that we refer them to and often transport them to see. What I have found working in this field is that others are as passionate as we are and when they say they will do something, I know I can trust them to follow through. So I am confident that sending my client to them will be a good thing. We also work with the hospitals and UCCs so that when they have clients that need ongoing IV antibiotic treatment or other treatments that the patients either don't show up for or at all, they can get us involved just by sending a referral through our dispatch center with an idea of where we might find this person and we're usually able to meet with them to complete a course of treatment. Through these processes, we have been able to connect POPs with a family doctor. We've also been able to take them for specialty appointments. Now we've been able to get him into some stable housing and have helped, to, helped him to arrange to pay his various fines that he's collected over the years. He really wants to be seen as a member of society even though he is outside of the mainstream. We also like to follow up with our patients to make sure that their, their concerns are resolved. We don't just expect that they have taken their antibiotics appropriately or that their wounds have miraculously been taken care of and healed properly. We either make follow-up visits or work with our partners to ensure that their concerns are completely resolved. To this end, we have a very good relationship with the nurses, social workers, and staff at the shelters. And if we need to find someone, <coughs> we have the DOPE team and the bylaw officers that are often able to help us with this. We are persistent in making sure that they get the care and follow-up that they need to stay healthy as long as they want that support. And finally, we're often able to connect them with further supports. We connect them with traditional services and within reason get them to relax the rules a little for our clients. And we uh, liaise often with services that are designed specifically for this population. I wish I could name all of the wonderful people and services that we have found in this city that are nonprofit or city services or AHS services that have created a wonderful network of care for our most vulnerable. It is navigating them all that's difficult but that is a place that we work hard to be able to help our clients. 
After a year of our service being available, we did an evaluation to ensure both to ourselves and to AHS who funds us that we are actually making a difference. POPS is one of 365 unique patients that we interacted with in 832 different encounters in our first year. The quote above is from POPS, um, but the evaluators got many similar ones from our different clients. Even we were heartened when we looked at the number of people we had seen and what many of our clients had said about us and our services. So I think that our statistics show, and we like to believe, that people like POPs now have improved health outcomes and consequently a better quality of life because of our committed and coordinated interdisciplinary team and extensive network of equally caring and committed physicians, social workers, addiction workers, psychologists, psychiatrists, shelter workers, housing agents, etc. The list of people supporting this work, like their compassion, is truly endless. Thank you.